Welcome to part one in a series where I want to teach you all about the Canva apps that, that are available for you. I'm going to be doing a lot of focus on photo apps because I feel like in Canva we're using a lot of photos. We're trying to either use photos that already exist inside Canva and make them more interesting and unique or we've got our own photos. We want to make sure we feel a little bit fancier. So over this series, it's not going to be every single week, but make sure you're checking back. Make sure you subscribe to catch all of these. We're going to go over how to do like a double light exposure effect. We're going to go over how to do AI headshots. So many different things. But today I want to share with you firstly how you can merge two images together and blend them and fade them into each other which is such a fun effect this is a bit of an idea of what it looks like this is another idea of what you can do with it and there are so many really cool things we can do with this and it will help make your designs more interesting more eye-catching more wow so that you're able to capture your audience's attention So hi, if we have not met before, my name is Jackie and I am a graphic designer who loves teaching business owners how they can use programs just like Canva for their businesses to help them to grow, help them to scale and help them to stand out to their ideal audience and make sales in their business. So today I have a quick tutorial for you on how you can blend those two images together. And it's really very straightforward. I'm going to show you a really simple and easy way to do it. And then I'm going to show you a more fun way to do it and give you some ideas, I guess, on how you can apply this. I'm also going to show you a version if you don't want to blend two images together and you just want to fade an image into color, a really quick way to do that that doesn't even involve using a Canva app. So let's dive in. So first off, I'm going to show you how to do this. Very, very straightforward. Firstly, I need you to find two images that you can use. I have my own brand photo shoes. I'm just going to use my own images here, but you can use stock imagery. You can use Canva imagery. You can use images you take it on your phone, any kind of imagery you want to use here go for it. Now you might want to choose to, to blend like two really intricate images together. Like I've got two images of me here, or you might choose to, which I'm going to do for this one here, an image of myself blurred onto maybe a stock image that's a bit more simple. So I'm going to insert, I've got just a new page here. This is a social media size, uh, four by five Instagram size. And I'm going to grab a picture of myself in here. So say I have this image here, just a random one of me pointing. <laughs> and then I'm going to grab another photo. So I'm going to go to elements, type in here. Uh, let's go balloons. Something a bit fun. I'm going to roll across to photos in here. Let's just use this image because it's got similar colors to what I have already. So I'm going to make this, grab this bottom lever and kind of pop it like so and say I want to fade into that. I might even just bring it across a little bit. And there's a nice back background here to be honest. What I'm going to do now is go across to apps. That's on the side panel that you have inside your Canva. You click on app. This is a whole range of pretty much like add-ons. Like there's a free and paid apps you can access in here to help your Canva designs to grow even more. And over this series, I'm going to share with you a lot of these different apps. But for now, I want to show you the blend ones. I want to type into the search bar right at the top here, blend. So I've typed in blend and I want to see this one called image blender, not blend image. I'm going to go into that one another time, but for now, image blender, you can see this pebble button here, which says blend selected image. So I've currently got this image here selected. I could have my other image selected if I wanted to, but I'm going to use the image I have on top and press blend selected image. So you're going to look at that image and begin to fade it out into the background. So I can choose here if I want to have it linear, which means a straight blend, or if I want it radial, which means it's a circular blend. This could also be really useful if you wanted to do a really cute blend like so. And you can obviously change the size of this by grabbing the little margin here and changing the size. I'm going to choose mine for being linear for now. And I can also edit this. So you can see I've got this little... You see this little half circle here? It was kind of hiding at the edge, but I can actually grab this and move it around. This end here is where the image starts to blur from, and this end here is where the image blur ends. The longer I have this blur, the more slow the fade will be, and the shorter I have this blur, the more harsh the fade will be. So I'm going to grab this and make sure it's rotated, being over here to over here, so it's blended in to the right direction. It's just going to take a moment to catch up. What I recommend doing is making sure that this little end where the image starts is always at a minimum where your image, where your other image let leaves off. So you can see here, I've got my background image ends here. So I want to make sure that I have this at least starting here. I don't want it back here where I've got a little bit of that, that, that line of the background image. I'm going to bring that to being around here and I can drag this to being here, or I can drag it to being a lot further out. So it's a bit softer or a lot closer in. You can also see, I've got this option over on the left-hand panel for strength. If I lift up that strength, it kind of toggles the intensity of that blur. So it kind of similar to how this line would toggle that too. I think I'm going to leave it around. I actually quite like the, the, the full softness of it. I think that's the, be the better look. So I'm going to drag that all the way out here. And when I'm happy, I'm going to press save. That's I'm going to insert this as an actual photo straight into my design. So I could actually copy and paste this and move it and do whatever I want to with it. You'll see it's kind of added it almost into my uploads here as a blended image. And so some ways I could use this even more as I want. I could make it even larger. I could make it even smaller. 
another action you might want to do here is I grabbed the background image here and just I just copied and pasted it so I had two of them I can overlap that over where it was and if you have Canva Pro you can hit the background remover so if I hit the background remover here and now it's kind of cut me out of the background which means I can then kind of overlay it on top if potentially I wanted the background to feel blurred out but I didn't want that blur to go over the top of me you can kind of see the difference of the blur and this image being on top of me it's kind of covering me a little bit say if I want this softness in the background but I don't want that to cover me doing that background remover is just a really fun way to make that different that's how you can do that this effect, this version here that I've done here too, I described two images, one I faded on top of the other one, really quite straightforward, really quite simple. Another version I want to show you is how to do this effect, which doesn't use that Blender image tool at all. It's just a gradient tool, which is directly available inside Canva. So I'm going to show you how I did that. Got my image here and I'm going to grab another photo and then to enter that image in, I'm just going to click on it drag it around and make it this, as large as my design. Then what I can do is insert a rectangle. So to do that, I'm just going to press R on my keyboard and it's inserted a rectangle or a square. If you wanted to do that without the keyboard shortcut, you can just go to elements and you can see in the shapes panel, I could just insert this exact rectangle and that's the same rectangle. You don't want to use just any rectangle because if I go to, if I search square up here, for example, then if I use a graphic, if I insert this one here, it's not going to have the same capabilities as if I inserted this shape. Canvas shapes are really versatile shapes. With these, I can do whatever I want with these. I can add uh, borders, I can add margins, I can change the color of them, and I can add a gradient really easily, and I can change the size of that gradient, which is why I want to make sure I'm using that shape rather than a graphic. So I'm going to delete those now and go back to this one, which is just the original one I inserted. I'm going to drag this bottom handle down so it covers the whole screen. Then I'm going to go to my color option up here. So select my purple select the purple again and when I click on this purple you see it kind of gives this filter option you'll see if I toggle across from solid color over to gradient I can now add a gradient into this design now the best bit here is you can make this gradient transparent so what best practice to do here is grab the second color in your gradient so I've got the first color is the same as the background color I want to fade into then I'm going to grab my second color here which Canva has just added in automatically I'm going to select on the, the eyedropper tool here and drag my eyedropper to select the same purple so they're both exactly the same color. So whatever color you've got here, duplicate it to have here. Then you'll see under the color selection option here, I also have a, an opacity selection. And so I'm gonna grab the toggle down the top here and make it more transparent. You can see already what that's doing to my design. If I bring it all the way down to the bottom, that's gonna be fading into nothing. Now you'll see that this design has now got a fade into nothing over here and a color over here. That's the opposite of what I want. So I'm gonna click on that color and move these colors around. So I'm gonna select this purple, click and drag drag it and swap its place so that the color is on the opposite side. Now you can see my image is fading perfectly into my design. If I want to change how this feels, I can drag this out, make it more stronger and bring it back down. An extra bonus tip for you here is if you click on this color again, if I was to duplicate this purple, if I press press plus here and have two purples, you can see that that gradient is actually a bit stronger to one side and it's got like it's got two thirds color rather than half half. I'm going to undo that. And what another trick I can do here is the same as what I did on this design here, was if I didn't want the, the image to be covering me or the gradient to be covering me, I can then select this image, press copy and paste or duplicate it and realign it back on top of my original image. You can see I've got two here. Again, press background remover if I have Canva Pro. And it's going to, then going to remove me from the background. And you can see that I'm now overlaid onto this where you're not losing me on behind the gradient. So that's just a really fun effect to give to your images, to give to your photos if you want to soften them down. So I hope you enjoy using that Blender tool. There, are, there is limitless possibilities here of fading two images together. So let your creativity run wild and let me know how you use it in the comments below. Make sure you hang around, make sure you've hit subscribe to catch the future tutorials I'm going to be sharing on how you can use the different Canva apps, particularly the photo-based ones, to up-level your designs so you can start making more sales. If you would like some more support in your DIY graphics, I have a whole course dedicated just to helping you create really strategic designs to grow your business. It's called DIY Design My Biz and the doors open right now. Just head to diydesignmybiz.com forward slash join and you can get all of the details there and you can join immediately. You'll get head to toe tutorials on everything from starting your business brand to creating every single graphic that you need for your business, how to use Canva, how to use it well, plus support from me inside a Facebook group and also monthly live calls where we can join together with others in the group and workshop your designs together and I'll share my screen just like this and edit your designs. I would love to see you there. In the meantime, thanks for joining and I'll see you for another tutorial next week. Bye.